Here we go. Hey Mitch. Hey Jay. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the gossip chairs, everybody. On today's episode of I'm Q&Aing everybody on my second channel because I thought it'd be really insightful to get to know the members of the squad a little bit more. We have the beautifully talented, hilarious genius that is my cousin, my financial dependee, <laughs> my housemate, Mitchell James. Wilson. Hi. <laughs> Everybody's been submitting questions all day, Mitch, and you're going to answer them if that's all right. We've had a couple of people Easy. do these Q&As so far, mm. and everybody seems to really like them, so we're carrying them on. Let's do it. Ready? Let's get it. First question. Do you like Palmos up the borough? What a silly question. <laughs> Obviously. Tell because, the audience what a Palmo so is. So a Palmo is a signature Middlesbrough dish. Um, it is a chicken breast covered in breadcrumbs with bechamel sauce and cheese. To, when I explain that to people, it sounds rubbish, but like when you have it, it's amazing. Palmos are unreal. They're amazing. They are Go unreal. get yourself one. Up the borough. Up the borough. What a way to start. What is your drive, Mitch? and why are you doing what you're doing? So it might be a good idea actually to start by telling the audience what you're doing, how you got here, mm. and then tell, tell us why mm. you're doing what you're doing. So I'm an actor and also a content creator. I find that like when I was in school, for example, I was struggling to find what I actually wanted to do. I, like, I guess where I belonged or where I felt that I could make an impact and change someone's life or change life for myself. So when I found acting and I think I was around 15, 16, I kind of felt like where I, I belonged, I guess. And you know, what drives me is like leaving a legacy or like leaving something behind. Like for even look at these, like people still speak to me this day about my one man show and that's forever. Like people can look at my work and what I've done and see what I'm about as a person. And also, I, I love it, I love what I do. With, with the content creation side, it's like, I think it's just in the family, really. Like, for us to just be able to know what to do in front of a camera, like, regardless. And when you're surrounded by people like, like Jane and Niall, who are doing what they've done, it's like, it's inspiring. So it's like, I want to recreate that in my way, so like, we can all look back and think. If that answers the question, I guess. And where I am now, and I'm in Leeds and I'm happy. I'm just happy. At the moment, I actually say that as well, I am pretty happy with where I'm at in my life, right now i'm like, pretty happy awesome yeah proud of you every day i'm proud of you every day yeah yeah what is it like being in the acting industry it's hard i i believe it's the hardest industry in the world um same with like modeling or anything like that anything creative is very difficult um if you were to ask me how many no's i've got i've had a lot some people have been a bit more critical than others some people are just like this you that but if you, my biggest advice to anyone is if you don't have that, I guess what, that's the word, like if you can't take the criticism or like, you know, the accept a no, you're not built for the industry. Like a nine hundred no's, but that one yes could be like life changing, but it's hard, but you have to keep going, just like persevering and be determined to do what you want to do. Cool, sticking on to the acting theme then, how did you get into acting? Like I said, like I said earlier, I had to find where I'd belonged and tried things. I remember people used to find it weird because in school I was I was surrounded by a lot of people who were not in that crowd at all. And I don't really speak to those people anymore, which kind of shows it's like, it just took certain things for me to realize that this is what I'm good at. And this is what I want to do. It's hard, like you have to try things. Like when I found it, I stuck at it because I love it. <laughs> I feel like you've always been though, like you were always, when we were kids, like, you remembered all the lines from the cartoons and you were always playing a different character. Yeah. You were either Spongebob or Quagmire or like, you were always sort of into the industry without even maybe knowing it mm. to begin with. I like just being like, I guess, my people, you know, my parents used to say, oh, you need to get him on a stage. People say that all the time. People say to mum and dad all the time. They don't, they, mum, my thing is mum and dad never said, you, you're going to do this. Yeah. I think mum just wanted me to find it. Yeah. and realise and when I did it, I'm here and doing my thing. And what was your first ever show, do you remember? <sighs> like, I'd say in a professional sense we did the History Boys, which is Britain's favourite play, which was an honour to do that. Um, we did it at Middlesbrough Little Theatre. But one of my first ever shows that I remember, like truly remember was a play called Ten Tiny Toes, which was based in the army by Esther Wilson, and I shaved my head through. Did you? Yeah, I did shave my head at 16. 
for the role because I wanted to look more for the part and that's savage yeah I loved it. What is it like being behind the scenes with the gang? I think it truthfully I think that it makes I like to know that these are real people um, on YouTube we do people play up to the camera this character this big personality he's this he's that but and that's all you guys see but like what I see is like real people with real emotions who have real thoughts and who are like genuine people and I love that like I can see both sides in a good and a bad way like if I knew you for example if I knew one of you were in a bad place but on camera you were showing a, like a face that you were okay it's fascinating how I'd see like how how you flip that switch regardless yeah it's your job but at the same time it's like I always think like you're a person and like I think people like to see the raw of what someone is yeah. at the same time we love the but I like it I think it's really interesting because I get to see like how things come together and how things formulate. I think it's sick. You get to know all the secrets. All the big secrets that are spoke about right here. <laughs> right, right now. <laughs> Not when the camera's on. <laughs> um, this one's hilarious. Did Mitchell really invest money and get thousands back? <laughs> People no. still ask me about that to mm, this day. Like big fat no and i've and a lot of people don't want to speak to me from home because they believe i'm a d for, for that they still believe that i am it's still up there yeah i know but i can't see because let me clarify no absolutely not i like no do you want to just tell the audience what happened in a nutshell when i was on tour for panto at christmas my instagram account got hacked the mitchell wilson account got hacked so i created it's mitchell wilson which is me go follow it <laughs> but when it happened i was in rehearsal so so much was going through my head people were being like people were calling me being like why are you promoting this promoting that but I didn't know what was going on at the time because my brain was just frazzled and no, I, I, I did not invest thousands. Don't, do not do anything like that if I, if my, that account has messaged you, ignore it. Like, Please report you. it. Yeah, just report, I want it gone. Like, whoever that person is, you, I swear on camera, but I don't care. I just, it was just stressful. It's not what I wanted during panel, but. Do Niall and Jay feel like cousins or more like friends? I think family and friends are different. Like my besties, I don't know. I don't, how else would I put it? Like it's, I don't know. Cause nothing's changed since we were kids. Nothing has changed. It's like, we all grew up together, the four of us. It's always been that way. Like, but it's nicer now that I see them a lot more frequently because I'm in Leeds. Call each other cuz. It's just, yeah, cousins. I'll say cousins. How's training going for your boxing match? Really good, thank you. Um, probably the first I've ever felt actually. So for those of you who don't know, Mitchell is doing a boxing match on March 19th um, at Leeds. Go get your tickets if you want to yeah. go and watch it or donate to it and we can leave. Have you got a link? Yeah, I've got a link to my Just Giving page. If we you can guys leave can... that in the yeah. description. Donate as much as you can. We're raising money for Cancer Research UK. It's a sick event. So what training are you doing then for your boxing match? How are you preparing? So we're, we're doing, so when we first start, obviously we get eight weeks training for free. Um, through the ultra white color boxing like company and they we do conditioning we actually prepare ourselves like in terms of like you know how to hold yourself as a boxer you know like taking a punch throwing a punch the movement everything like is all gonna it's crazy cause it's all happening in eight weeks time and it's like it's a lot to take in but the, the most important thing i've found is like being fit enough to actually go three rounds like the conditioning and preparing yourself for that is like it's tough, but it's amazing. Like, it's so good. That's like, awesome. It's, it's so good, honestly. Another question. What do you miss from Middlesbrough? Family and friends. That's it. Like, the family that are in Middlesbrough. Like, my mum, my brother, and everyone there, and my friends. I think what I understand and I've wrapped my head around is that I'm doing my thing, they're doing their thing. And, like, I find that Middlesbrough's great to go home to and to see those people, but I need to travel around and be in different areas. I think I love Middlesbrough, it's my hometown, but I just think I can't picture myself being there forever. But when I go back, it's like, I love it. Okay, next question. What was your most embarrassing drunk moment? <sighs> my 23rd birthday, which we had in Leeds. No, I can say, I can say this. My 23rd, so this was like, Six months ago, yeah. Um, all the boys came to Leeds, went out for drinks, went for a meal at um, a barbecue place. We went for a drink afterwards. I necked, I can't remember what I necked at the time, and then a shot, and then something else. And um, God love this man, he was the loveliest man ever. We got in this taxi, and I could feel it coming, but it was too late for me to, to like open the door or anything. He was traveling at like 30 miles per hour. 
So I threw up like everywhere in the taxi. I was like, oh no, like, like when I mean everywhere, like everywhere. And the whole ride home, this taxi driver had no clue. And we could have probably just, and he was going, I'm going home after this, after this, I'm going back home to my wife. And I'm thinking in my head, he turned around now, the, the, the massacre, the massacre. Oh, like, man. it was kind, honestly. So I, I, we pulled over and I said, when he pulled us up at the hotel, I said, look, mate, I'm sorry. I will own up. And he was like, why did you do this? And I was like, I don't know. And he was going, I don't, because I sobered up when it happened. So then Jacob was like, well, let's go buy some baby wipes and we'll clean it. We got baby wipes, we cleaned it. Bear in mind, I've got it all, like, it's all over me. And um, I just literally whipped out 20 pounds and said, mate, Take this, I'm sorry. He said, like, just, just go, just go, and it was, it was horrible. Like, but then I sobered up and we carried on. But it, top of my head, that's the first one I'm thinking of. Like, that was carnage. Oh god. Was... Right, last but not least question. Then, what's the rest of 2022 look like for Big Mitch? We just continue to grow, we keep doing. I'm not necessarily, I'm not thinking fully about what I want to happen. I'm just believing that everything will come to me at the right time that should do. For example, the growing of my TikTok, like on YouTube, um, my Instagram growing back since it got hacked. But <laughs> like getting back to where I was. I think as well in terms of an acting sense, like I can visualize a huge role being presented to me at the right time. But I don't know at what point this year it will happen, but it's just, it's all gonna come at this point, like slowly but surely. I'm yeah. proud of you. Well, I'm proud of you. Thank you so much for being on my video. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it's always a pleasure. I love these little Q and A's. I'm so excited to keep doing more. I love them. Remember guys to subscribe if you aren't already subscribed to the second channel we love you lots we'll see you in the next video keep smashing it and remember anything's possible if you just were